Hi everybody, I'm Steve Hoberman. I've been a data modeler for over 30 years, have written a few books on data modeling, including one on ER Studio Data Architect, which we call ER Studio for short, and use ER Studio in my data modeling classes and during many of my consulting assignments. In our last video together, you learned how to trial ER Studio. After this video, you will be able to navigate the ER Studio user interface like a pro. The user interface is very intuitive, especially with the newer versions of the tool, which use ribbons to group together the different functions and features. When you first start ER Studio, you'll see the welcome page. In addition to learning about features, through tutorials and resources. This screen will notify you if a newer version is available and also allow you to create new or open recent models. The welcome page can be turned on and off using the toggle switch under the tools menu. Hey, congratulations, you've invoked your first ribbon command. All ER Studio features and functions can be invoked through the ribbons. In addition, many of these features and functions can be invoked by right clicks and double clicks and sometimes shortcut keys such as Control S for save. I like that ER Studio gives you multiple ways to invoke the same commands. You can use whichever option you're most comfortable with. All right, so let's create a new data model. Under the file ribbon, Click New. This option allows you to choose relational or dimensional models. Okay. Relational modeling is used for transaction data stored in relational databases, while dimensional modeling is used for dimensional data stored in data warehouses used for data analytics. The new option also allows you to choose whether to reverse engineer an existing database or import data from an existing source. In a future video, we'll cover reverse engineering, a very cool feature of ER Studio. For now, let's create a new model by making sure the relational option is selected and click OK. We see two windows, the Data Model Explorer window and the Data Model window. The first window, Data Model Explorer, helps you navigate data models and their objects, reuse design elements, and create new objects. There are four tabs that offer access to important functionality. The first tab, Data Model, uses a Windows-like file structure to help you navigate and modify a data model. This containment type structure works very well for data models as you can navigate from a data model to a submodel to the entities within the submodel and then to the attributes within each entity. This second tab, the data dictionary tab, helps you manage data dictionary objects, including attachments, defaults, rules, reference values, user defined data types, domains, reusable procedure logic, reusable procedures, and also libraries. When I'm in this tab, it's usually to create and use domains. I actually use a lot of domains and highly recommend that on your models. What is a domain? A domain constrains the values of an attribute, such as a currency domain assigned to a currency attribute would only allow valid currency values, such as USD or AUD. This third tab, the data lineage tab, provides a visual data moves between the target and source systems, along with why and when the data is moved. You could create data movement rules that can dictate, for example, when data should be archived or a specific value range the data must fall within to be moved. It's very cool. The fourth tab here, the macro tab, allows you to add, edit, rename, delete, and run macros. You can also create folders in which to store macros for easy reference. ER Studio comes with many useful macros installed right out of the box. The ones I use regularly are the import export Excel features, especially for getting definitions in and out of the model. Now the second window here, this large one, 
is the data model window. And this is where we do the data modeling and display the data models. We can move diagram objects, copy and paste them into a new location, resize the diagram objects, and also change their colors. Now let's introduce these seven ribbons up here. This file ribbon, it's great for model level operations, including create, open, save, close, and print data models. Then this diagram tab here is great for making the model easy to read, such as zoom features and auto layout. The insert tab is used to create the model components. And this is a hint here. This is where you're going to spend a lot of your modeling time. This model tab is from model level features and properties, such as comparing models and changing notations. The tools tab is for all other features, including turning on additional windows and importing and exporting the model. And then we have this repository tab, which is for interacting with the repository of models that have been saved there. And then use this macro tab for adding up to 10 predefined macros to the menu and for creating your own macros using the SACS basic language, which is a derivation of Visual Basic. Any of these functions you use a lot can be added to the quick access toolbar at the top with a single right click operation. All right, now under the insert menu, click entity and then click anywhere in the modeling pane. You've just created your first entity. Give it a name such as customer and then click somewhere else in the palette. And what you'll find is you can quickly create hundreds or more entities. Some clients have tens of thousands of entities. ER Studio supports sticky buttons so that you can create multiple modeling components very quickly. To turn off sticky buttons, right click anywhere in the white space on the palette or click somewhere in the ribbons. You'll know the sticky button is off when the cursor returns to the arrow symbol. You can play with all of the different types of modeling components in this ribbon. Entities, views, objects, relationships, shapes, comments. Let's create a customer account model. If you created extra entities like we did here, delete them. You can delete them by clicking on them and hitting the delete key or by right clicking on the entity and choosing delete entity. You can also delete multiple entities at a time, click and drag over them and then hit the delete key. Now, Notice too, when you right click on the entity, lots of options come up. The options available when right clicking change depending on where you're right clicking. Right clicking on the white space, for example, gives different options than right clicking on the entity. If you double click on an object, such as on an entity, the default or last option you chose comes up. For example, double clicking on an entity brings up the entity editor where you can rename entities. So this is our customer entity. Let's double click on this entity 33 and let's rename it to account. You can do a lot from this window, including creating attributes for this entity and creating an entity definition. I've seen lots of definitions like that. <laughs> Click on relationships next up here and you'll see all the different types of relationships available. Choose one of them and I'll choose non-identifying optional. Notice the shape of the cursor changes. You can see a P when you hover over an entity. P stands for parent and you click on the parent entity first. So I just clicked on customer. Now, when you hover over another entity, the cursor changed to a C for child. Click on account and you created your first relationship. Customer is the parent and account is the child. Now, right click on customer and choose edit entity. 
or simply double click on customer like we did earlier and you'll see this entity editor again. Click on the attributes tab and click add. Let's create the attribute customer number and we will make the format integer. So I'm going to click down here and choose integer. And we're going to make it the primary key and also write a short definition. We'll choose an equally meaningful definition like we did earlier. Okay. And then let's add a few more attributes. So I'm going to click add again, including customer first name. customer last name and let's pick a fun one how about favorite song when you're done click OK and you've just created some of the attributes there are many features to play with click on everything play with everything it's the best way to learn I'm going to show you just two more things highlight the two entities we've just created and you do that by clicking and dragging over them or by holding down the control key and clicking on each. Then go under the diagram tab and play with alignment. I'll top align here, but you can play with any one of these. This is a great way to get your data models looking sharp. I'll also just right click on this relationship and straighten the line a bit. Under the tools tab, Choose Options. All of ER Studio's options appear here. And when we spend a whole video, we can spend an entire video together just on this one window. It's amazing what functionality is here. Get familiar with these settings. You'll use them quite a bit. I find that I use the display mode a lot. And it lets me create conceptual models, for example, by hiding the attributes. So when you're done playing with a few of these settings, play with all the other features here, and that's the best way to learn. All right. Go play.